as I promised last week, everybody, this is a video looking at La La Land, why we like it, but mostly looking at the reception it's received, some of the backlash, some of the, most of the negative criticism that it's received, and just us sharing our thoughts on how ridiculous that is and how much we like the film. So, is there any word that you would like to begin, Andre? Maybe to say just why we like the film. Where do we begin? A but... brief review. Yeah. Very briefly, uh, well, in case you haven't told already, I, I love the film. It's... As an up-and-coming actor, I was instantly attached to Mia's struggle to become an actor because that audition from hell she has at the beginning of the film. I've had auditions like that. that. That kind of stuff does happen and more frequently than I'd like to admit, to be honest. But just from that very moment, I was just kind of, you know, empathy was there from the very beginning. Definitely. And, you know, that, that's the thing I like about the film is the realism that it has. Even w walking into it, I wouldn't have minded if it mm. was a much more unrealistic film because I do enjoy musicals. I am a big fan of the likes of Rocky Horror Picture Show or Chicago or Singing in the Rain or earlier classics, but it's like a, it's almost like a musical for people that don't really like musicals that much. Mm. It's more in the light of the likes of Cabaret and all that jazz. They're much more about the, the characters and tackling something a little bit bigger. But it's also a film that's you know, really funny very well rounded it's very funny and very sad and there's a lot of truth to it I think that's what sticks out for me and then of course as Andrew said there it's a film that looks at actors and struggles and, and there's a lot more to it than just uh, if you were just an actor it's also it can, it can be related to any passion mm. someone has yeah. whether it's film whether it's music mm. whether it's something completely different and that level of the empathy is definitely there um, but I think it strikes a chord with me also not as an actor but as a filmmaker in general and a lot, a lot of stuff in it just rings very, very true. And I think it's got, that's another reason yeah. it's probably so mm. popular among filmmakers, that upcoming amateur filmmakers and stuff like that, people that have dreams and stuff, because it really tackles dreams while also mm. uh, the uh, taking away the illusion that s certain dreams can have. <sighs> right, well, this is where we delve into the, the fun stuff, the, some of these articles we bumped into. Yeah. Some of these are questionable at best for journalistic standards, but that's journalism for you these days. But yeah, um, those was it <clears throat> links in your last discussion about criticism. Some of the stuff written. Yeah, here. this this yeah. ties in quite a bit to what mm. we discussed last time, and we're gonna bring some of the stuff up. There's more that we want to say about these films, about what mm. we think the film means and represents. But you know, more or less, we're gonna talk about what the reception it's had and how disgraceful it is. Uh, the Guardian seemed to have an anti. La La Land Agenda among some other articles yeah. here and we are naming I mean we can name names because you've written it you put yourself out there for ridicule when you write something so not going to do no personal attacks but this, no is just, attacks. this is freedom of speech the same way you you have the freedom to say this stuff we have the freedom to say we'll we let the work speak you. for itself yeah. and you can be the judge of that um, mm -hmm. one of the things that's been criticised is it's discussion of music and stuff like that. Mm. I think I think that'll be a good one to open to is oh, this one the the white jazz narrative. This, this it's was, a very radical piece. This of was in MTV. This was this is quite some. It was about it's it's kind of obviously jazz has a great history steep within black culture in America, and I just think that this article seems to be a little too protective of that. There, it's just talking about how it's like a white man almost hijacking jazz within this film for his own means he's yeah. trying to single handedly save jazz he's this kind of white hero who's going to save the yeah. the black people or, and there's there's the quote yeah. that I always remember is he said he, it, it's the sentence it's, it really brings in a lot of this flipping mm -hmm. SJW crap uh, like uh, uh, white splaining and man splaining using the same sentence whenever whenever Ryan Gosling's character's not white splaining jazz she's he's man splaining it mm -hmm. to Emma Stone's character and Mia and I think I'm, I'm pretty mm. sure he said he calls Damien Chazelle a, a misogynist someone I don't know if it's in one of these but I heard I, I read an article <laughs> like that's actually that, that is personal because if you if you look at Damien Chazelle in any interview that he's uh, been in and when he talks about the film how could you say that about someone like Jesus I was just sorry I was <laughs> did you find it so, I found something quite extraordinary here it's like tinkling the eyes as gosling and his pearly white hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. That's, right. That's quite something. I right. do not want to hear this person's thoughts. That's quite enough, that sort of thing. And 
yeah. Passion of the Christ or something like that. He's all out of the way. But, um, okay. one thing that has been criticised mm. quite a bit is the dancing and the singing. Yes. As we know. Um, you know, that was definitely open to criticisms. Um, oh yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, even taking, in, taking into the consideration that they only had a few months dancing lessons and Ryan Gosling completely he pretty much mastered the piano in a matter of months. Yeah, that is him playing in the film. That's that's extraordinary. And that's uh, yeah. that is something that, and that is why Demon Giselle chose to mm-hmm. use the camera in a certain way to kind of reveal that this is definitely there's no tricks here, this is definitely yeah. Ryan Gosling playing when the camera sweeps around him in that whenever he's he's playing in the club. And in terms of the singing, I think you could cover yeah, what well, some I've, people said about the singing. I've had about six months of singing lessons, I can tell you it's it's not easy, like and I think honestly, I think Emma Stone has a beautiful singing voice. I mean, well, I, I bought this thing like right after I saw the film. Like I, I love the music in it. I think she's a fantastic singing voice. To be honest, I think it's very. There's a lot of passion in there. It's a lot of the time. It's not a. Sometimes with singing, it's about the the emotion you get across, not just the quality of the singing. But I think she definitely has a bit of both in there. Yeah. Ryan Gosling, I think people mistake not being able to sing with lacking range. I think. He can sing. He doesn't have a hell of a lot of range, but I think he can sing, yeah. and that the, those songs are kind of crafted for him. Yeah, and it's also probably worth mentioning he does actually have his own band. Yeah, he so was he was producing music. It's not like, like the first before, time he ever yes, sang yeah, or anything. Exactly. No, I love the songs too, and I would I definitely agree. Ryan Gosling, he is a good singer. He's not a fantastic singer. Doesn't have much range, but mm. I think the fact that their actors and their characters are so well built, the emotions there mm. because. It, it, yeah. Just the way they sing, the, the emotions mm. there, especially in Emma Stone's knockout uh, performance of Audition. Yeah. That, that's a great mm-hmm. track. And now that time, so much time has passed from we first saw it, about six months now, actually, um, I can easily say that the soundtrack has mm. become one of my favourites of all time. Yeah. Very, I mean, I, top three or top five movie yeah. soundtracks, so at least for musicals. And that's just from listening to it over yeah. and over. And so much time has passed, which shows that it stands the test of time. That I'm still enjoying listening to the mm-hmm. songs and still feeling the emotion that comes with the songs, and that makes you yeah. think of the film. And that's what a good soundtrack mm-hmm. does. And I, I do love the music, the, the melody to the song as well. What do you think of that? Yeah, I think the opening number, I think, is absolutely fantastic. It just it's really gets the film off with a bang. It's well, the scene itself is great, but just in terms of the music, it's a really if you're walking down the street, like you almost want to sing a yeah. dance down the street. I can't dance at all, like, but yeah. Oh, but I think it's this. One of these other articles had something to say about the music we're over here. Oh my goodness, is there? It pleads desperately for a better score than the second-rate throwaways. Now, I I think that's maybe pushing it a little bit. That's that's taking it a wee bit too far. I think you can criticize the singing all you want. Like it's bad. Yeah, some people like certain styles of singing, but I think the music itself, I think, is a fantastic song. Yeah, I, it's yeah. it's definitely the best musical of the decade so far yeah. because there's just so few. And we're, we're quite mm. lacking in music because that's it. and the fact that it's an original story it's not based on a Broadway play or, or a West mm. End or anything like that it's a completely original piece of work and it really does combine that kind of nostalgia with all them old Definitely. musical numbers and it updates it for a modern audience it's yeah. very, I think it's very accessible and I feel like, I feel like that's something that mm. a few have criticised it's all people say that about uh, people have always said that about Quentin Tarantino's work because he plucks he's a postmodern genius mm-hmm. or he's a postmodern hack you know, that's the big argument, you know, because he plucks with a lot of different sources and builds narratives around already existing yeah. ones. Uh, but La La Land does that, but it, it brings something completely new because it's set in yeah. the 21st century. The characters have modern situations. That's what I love about the opening. For me, the opening kind of represents, like, it's just this big modern world thing. It's a big, it's on a freeway. Mm-hmm. There's a big traffic jam. It's just very 21st century. Yeah. And that's it. It just opens. But then it combines that with, with fantasy and has all this singing and dancing going on it and I thought that was very interesting moving on from the music then there's the dancing which oh. a few have criticised <laughs> as well um, anyone that knows me personally knows I like dancing and maybe someday you'll all see me dancing somewhere um, you heard it here first folks yeah I think the dancing's great and this isn't from any critics it's just a few people that I've, I've spoken to and they were like you know I wish the dancing was a bit more elaborate you know, from Gosling and, and uh, Emma Stone. I think the dancing is absolutely fine. I think it's it's very rhythmic. It's not Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire, because no one can really move like Fred Astaire these days anyway. You know, there's only so much you can expect, and I don't think it, I don't think it's setting out to be this massive 
you know, putting on the Ritz kind of performing movie. Mm. You know, I think Gosling does a really good job of it, and I think the chemistry between Gosling and Stone when they're dancing uh, works really well in you know this the, that scene, which is just wonderful. Yeah, I think I think the dance is great. Mm. You know, it's not super elaborate, but it's still really entertaining to watch, and yeah. it does make you want to move mm-hmm. because I come out of that film wanting to dance. Anytime I listen to that soundtrack. Uh, I feel like dancing and, and I'll admit that I did it mm. m- maybe a week ago just walking to work and I just couldn't help myself from dancing just because I I react the rhythm that way some people sing too uh, to these kind of tracks mm. and I, th- I think the dancing was fine on the subject of chemistry I suppose do you want to move on to the Guardian review because that's one of the many go for it many go for it by Mr. David Cox who I certainly hope you're watching this sir both characters have been thought shallow and chemistry between them has been found lacking. Now, bear in mind, this is also not the first time that Gosling and Stone have been on screen together. That's right. Couple. It's was a crazy stupid love. They're in a, and yeah. it's a romance yeah. between the two of the yeah. characters as well. I I honestly don't get, like, far enough, if you don't if you don't like the film, you don't like the film, but there's some, some of this stuff, I just think this guy... Object, object, it's, objectively and factually. It's contrarian. There is chemistry. It is contrarian thinking. It really is. It just this film has become successful. It's this film's gonna win all the awards. This is a kind of a problem with awards season in general. I think if this there's one film always comes along and it's people are like oh the, the bookies and they're like this is the, gonna be the one that wins it, and as a result it's just every, the contrarians will come out and just attack it and end. Um, we talked about this. Can. We yeah. talked about this yeah. in our last discussion. Uh, it puts up anticipation for films. People think oh that won five Oscars. Mm. I'm disappointed because it yeah. didn't feel like a film that would win five Oscars to me. It's like, again, quarter of the day, take away a pinch of salt. <laughs> and I think I think sometimes when a film does really well or, or whatever, they create, does create controversy because no one's ever happy. That's just nah. it. Like, and that's why I'm sick of the Oscars and stuff. And a lot of time they never pick the things that I ended up enjoying throughout the year. And got, I mean, yeah. Nightcrawler didn't get much attention at the time, and Hell or High Water, you know, I know you're yeah, angry. My favourite film of last year, Hell or High Water. 20th Century yeah. Women, also, from last year, didn't get much. Yeah. And Patterson didn't yeah. get very much attention yeah. either, which I thought was a magnificent film from Adam yeah. Driver, uh, directed by Jim Jarmusch. Well, I think another part of the issue is that there's this kind of a stereotype, and it is, it's true to an extent about the Academy will always choose films about the entertainment industry. Yeah, because it's yeah. like Hollywood's love affair with itself. Yeah, I mean, yeah. when the people on the panel are filmmakers, etc., and people who love film, then it's, that that's bound up, just yep. bias. I mean, pff, recent years, obviously, The Artist. Yeah, The Artist was the um, first one I could think of. Birdman as well. Birdman, Birdman, Birdman got, mm. yeah, got a lot of rece- good reception mm-hmm. too. And it goes, it goes right far back into the 50s. The yeah. Bad and the Beautiful, uh, Sunset Boulevard mm. and Singing in the Rain especially uh, the film that kind of culminates um, musicals up to that point but I think it's just a lot of it the problem is people see this film and they think oh it's just another one of these ones that Hollywood's on about and that's all that the reception becomes about I, I think after three viewings I almost I almost do enjoy this more than the Singing in the Rain as charming and brilliant a film Singing in the Rain is you know Mm-hmm. And I only, I don't really like comparing things like that anyway, mm. but La La Land is yeah. it's a really substantial piece of work. I think it's great. Mm. I think there's definitely comparisons to Singing in the Rain, especially the definitely. the end, the epilogue sequence. Oh yeah, is very much like it's that very much like thing. Broadway melody. Yeah. you know, it's only it, it really feels like Broadway melody mm. using all these props and high, uh, highly fluorescent colors and mm. oh, the, the, even the way the camera moves. Not something that's really great in the film. There's like steady cam slash crane shots all over the film and. Mm. You know, it harkens back to how elaborate some camera work actually was in these old musicals. Yeah. You're right, it's actually quite impressive. Uh, um, the film Footlight Parade is one of the most famous for using its overhead views and stuff. And the way the camera moves in that film is very dynamic. And I think the film captures that dynamism, mm. to use the word, very well. Yeah. But combining it with that realistic aesthetic as we were talking about. Right, so we'll quote something else that David Cox has wrote, uh, has written. To create the illusion of charm, the film relies not on intrinsic strengths, but on external trappings. Uh, by external trappings, I think he means it's on, it's the style over substance. Probably. Um, give, me, give me it back. Give me, no, that, we're not done with you yet. Give me it. This isn't over. The aspirations they pursue instead of each other involve neither duty nor philanthropy, but only self-realisation. City of stars, are you shining just for me? You damn well ought to be because I'm worth it. Don't yes, and there's a lot of talk about how narcissistic these characters yeah. are, and that 
Ryan Gosling, uh, both of them are quite savage characters and don't want to listen to each other. And that just, mm. that's just like, I think, did we watch the same movie? I couldn't, mm. I, I couldn't imagine a worse interpretation of the film. You know, at its core, this is a film about love and sacrifice. You know, to me, this is mm. a film that love is about, uh, love and art is about compromise and sacrifice. Yeah. And the thing that they're calling the cat going as far as to say these characters are narcissistic, mm. is just devastating to me because it's like you must have a completely different philosophical look at life, you it's, know. Yeah, especially with the self doubt that both think. of these characters go through throughout the film. It's about you obviously the end with me saying what if I'm not good enough. Yeah, there are. So and that's, yeah, that's the answer. That's the question yeah. that most of us do face mm. uh, as filmmakers and artists. You know, well, damn time. As an example of where the chemistry really shines between these two is the dinner scene where the two of them effectively have an argument. I think that, seeing that the third time, the third time is just, it's as striking as it was the first, honestly. It's so, it feels so believable. Yep. You can see where both of them are coming from. It is very, it's just, it's just tragic, really. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a subtlety of the emotion, man, that, you, you know, you really yeah. feel like you're there with them, you know? It's very, and it, it just... Mm. Hits you the same way it did the first time. Yeah. Smacks you in the face. I mean, I, I love La La Land for what it is and for what it's worth. And I think it has held up on repeat viewings much later after all the hype and discussion that it that received yeah. during the Oscar season and all that sort of thing. So I wanted to see how well it does hold up much later, you know, after uh, people have had time to calm down and think mm-hmm. about it. And, you know, obviously, as times went on, the rev- the ratings and reviews have kind of dipped down a little bit. They're, they're a little less excitable, yeah. to use the word, you know, because whenever that film came out, there was a lot of excitement around it and buzz. But no, it, I think it holds up too well, and I do think in a decade, this is going to be known as a classic. Yeah. You know, looking back. Another point worth mentioning, back to the Academy Awards yet again, because that's something that people, I don't think, are going to stop talking about for a while, the whole mix-up. Firstly... It, fair enough, stuff like that shouldn't be happening, but can we move on? Because yep. a lot of the internet, and I know I'm generalising a little bit here, but I have seen this posted about quite a bit. It is almost as if La La Land was trying to usurp Moonlight's Oscar, as if La La Land was trying to take, steal its Oscar away from it, its best picture. When when that wasn't the case at all. It was the, what was it, the one, I think it was one of the producers of La La Land, was the one who says, look at this Moonlight, you have won it, they congratulate them with open arms like yeah. so I don't I think it's very very right yeah, it's quite a vicious attack isn't it it, is, it very and, much and, is and people yeah. I think I think especially on the internet with all the blogs and all the, the websites they love being cynical they just enjoy having yeah. a cynical look at life there's real mob mentality there as well yeah like and a cynical a cynical person I can be as pessimistic as I can be it's like mm-hmm. just like come on like yeah. have a bit more faith See that's the point that that's the point that this discussion has gotten to you it's reaching philosophical heights yep. about the outlooks of life because of the kind of things that they're trying to probe and dissect with the film, and they just mm. they just don't understand. Seriously, I just don't get it. I like the movie. Mm. He likes the movie. Mm. We like the movie. It's a great film. I really do think mm. it's a solid piece of work, and mm. I would love to do a, a video really tackling yeah. what it's about. Uh, but there's plenty of other people doing videos on that film. Like uh, Jack's made reviews. He done a great one looking just at the color. And I think the colours are magnificent, as I yeah, mentioned beautiful. earlier. Anything you'd like to finish off with saying? Honestly, I think that the film sums itself up best in this little quote between the two. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. It feels really nostalgic to me. Is That's it too nostalgic? The point. Yeah, That's... Are people going to like it? Fuck them. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, this discussion, I want people to comment below what do you think. I yep. really do want to open a a debate slash discussion here yeah. uh, about what you think of the film. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Or do you mm-hmm. think it's just somewhere in between? Comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Mm-hmm. Anything you'd like to say? Yeah, I mean, just... I don't, I don't want people to mistake this for us fanboying over the film and saying you cannot criticise this film. You can criticise this film to your heart's content. Really. Yeah. It's just there's... I think there's a lot of unwarranted and criticism is really what we were trying to tackle today, I think. Yeah. We're just trying to debunk a lot of these misconceptions that have arisen. Yeah. So, as I said before, thank you for joining us, Mm -hmm. and I'll see you next time.